Good morning. Good morning, Big Square Road to Road to .com with your morning horn of Z's, your sip of tea for another couple of days. Bitcoin bin is on the home stretch. He's already lost 15 pounds. Um, but it's not a diet. It's close. Anyway, so crazy busy right here, right now. Um, insanely busy. I just had a yesterday afternoon, had an interview with uh, Dave at X22 Report. Awesome site. Everybody go there, like, and subscribe. But I promised that I'd put up for free. Uh, he started talking about the Economist Magazine conspiracy stuff. And I, I dealt in that a long time ago. Um, as most of you know, I don't endorse products as a way to make a living for the most part. Uh, if I endorse anything, it's for the good of my customers, um, such as perpetual assets. And, and there's just so few. But the way I do make money is by, I used to sell books um, and the Road to Ruta uh, memberships and the Patreon. So that's how I earn a living. Uh, I don't like hawking stuff for the most part. Um, I'm not saying I'm against it, but I really have to do a lot of research <laughs> into it to, to tell my customers, oh, you should buy this. Um, so yeah, that's how I make a living. I, I write. And, you know, obviously now I'm all, all about YouTube, but I have 3,000 articles on the Road to Ruta. So if you want to support the Road to Ruta, subscribe to the Road to Ruta uh, webpage on the private road or Patreon channel. Thank you. Um, but here's what I want to talk about. I have posted a The World in 2017. My analysis, this is all for free, so go to the website. I uh, click on the very top article here. Uh, it's my analysis of the uh, Economist Magazine 2017 cover. Now, this was done three years ago. So there's going to be things that are wrong in it, right? Or two years ago. I think it got, came out in 16, December of 16. So it was a long time ago, but it is really interesting. And it's a 50-page report, and I'm giving it away for free. Um, I am working on redoing all my books, by the way. Uh, not redoing, just updating and shining them up a little uh, to put those back out in the scene to earn a living so there you go there's your freebie for the day really interesting stuff because i, I do think there's a, a a portion of time that was removed in the the playbook shall we say of the bad guys and the good guys um about a year to a year and a half cliff had talked about this and i think we're going to resume so i think this world in 2017 is very very important um and it's just cool to read and it's free so uh, have a day with that. Uh, send me your comments. But there's oh so many things I'm going. I'm working on right now. All of a sudden, last night it just exploded. Uh, I have a 20 year project that I'll talk about in a second. That is important to you, to you if you're a crypto investor or if you're a gold and silver investor. 20 year project. Uh, yes, I'm insane. <laughs> but what do you do? Um, Quick note, Deutsche Bank, UBS CEOs criticized the impact of neg negative rates. So this negative interest rate is gutting, gutting Deutsche Bank, the world's largest bank derivative holder. Gutting. Uh, and they know it, and they're coming out freaking out because they're going to drop interest rates again in Europe. <laughs> but that's the whole idea, destroy the system from within. Uh, I don't know what day. I have a day that is the most likely day if you're going to pick a day from uh from today until the end of the year there's going to be one most likely day and i have discussed that um but that doesn't mean oh it's going to happen on this day um hopefully nobody's putting me in that camp uh bull pony will probably get it right again <laughs> but other than that um, I, I'd say a 3% chance. If every day there's a 1% chance that the markets start to go crazy and the whole system starts falling apart, if every day is a 1% chance, this day is a 3% chance and it happens next week. So buckle up. Um, and I explain why. I'm going to put that video out too. Give away everything for free these days, um, which is great. Because it's important that people have this information um, and just prepare. You know, you know it's coming. You just don't know what day, right? So yeah, Deutsche Bank is freaking out uh, that the the ECB, the European Central Bank, 
Uh, let me read it. Europe's top banking executive ratcheted up criticism and negative interest rates uh, ahead of a key European bank meeting, warning of severe consequences to asset prices and the broader economy. Remember, Deutsche Bank is leveraged massively, massively. Even the little, little tick, a little tiny bet in the wrong direction, they get destroyed. And so absolutely, that's why they're freaking out. So keep an eye on Deutsche Bank again. And remember, that is the trigger. It was set up to be the trigger for the linchpin of the derivative. Great. You know, obviously yesterday's video did great of me going in and swapping uh, one ounce of gold for 20 ounces of silver. Uh, there's people on both sides of that camp, gold lovers, silver lovers, crypto lovers. They're all, we're all fighting the same fight, my friends. We're all in the same boat. We're trying to get rid of the old system and move on to something else. I think it will be a, a nice combination of all three, uh, gold, silver, and cryptos for our future, because those don't take a deciders. These old deciders of our old system are going to be gone. Um, and because they'll lose, we'll lose confidence in them because they lost the confidence, not because we just lose it. They destroyed their own system. They were not trustworthy. <laughs> so we're not going to trust them. So people are saying, oh my God, Bix, you bought silver and it dropped from $19.60 to $19. You must be really sad. No, I didn't buy silver. I swapped gold for silver. Gold and silver, here's the deal. And here's one of the main reasons I did it. Gold and silver move proportionally for the most part. Um, yes, they're both rigged, but historically they've always moved like this. They're both monetary metals on the monetary side. Silver obviously has the industrial part, which is much more important than it has been in, than in the last 200 years. Then, I mean, it's more important today as industrial than it ever has been in the history of humanity. <clears throat> Two reasons. One, most of the silver is gone. We've already used it up in, in little bits and cell phones and flat screen TVs and solar panels. Um, but also, we have an increase in the uh, need for industrial silver as we move out into this high-tech high, high sci-fi world. More and more silver is needed, best conductor of electricity. So, if we're in, in silver historically, here's how it moves. In a bear market, silver will run down the fastest. It'll crash the fastest and stay low for the longest time. In, a, in the bull market, it's the exact, exact opposite than gold. It's the exact opposite. Silver will run higher and faster than gold. So if you think we're in a bull market for gold, which all the, all the signs are there for a bull market and gold, then you don't want to invest in gold. You want to invest in silver and vice versa. If you think we're about to crash in the gold price because the economic system is so sound and we don't need gold, then you do the opposite. You'd sell your silver to buy gold because gold won't go down as fast as silver. Will. Hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, so yes, and that's what uh, Bill Holter was talking about. You know, he didn't say, I'm going to sell all my gold and buy silver forever. No, he said, I'm going to sell gold. He even, he, in brackets, he said, or even all my gold to buy silver because we're in a, bit, we're in a bull market now. And silver is going to run up a lot faster and a lot higher than gold during the bull market. I hope that makes sense. Um, and it's pretty obvious when you look back at time. Everybody knows silver's highly volatile. But why? <laughs> but why? He asks. Um, it's not pulled out of the ground much faster. You know, it's 2 to 3% change every year. That's not highly volatile. Demand is not highly volatile. Hardly at all. Industrial demand is pretty constant and, and growing. So what makes silver so volatile. It's the anti-banking metal. It, it is the metal that can kill the banks. It is the Achilles heel of the banks. So they rig it with derivatives on the COMEX and the LBMA. They make it volatile so you don't get into it. So if you think we're in a bull run, absolutely sell all your gold and buy silver because silver is going to run up faster for a million different reasons. So that's why I did it. So when silver goes down, gold usually goes down too as well. So today, yes, yeah, silver went down. What did gold do? Gold went down as well. Remember, I'm just playing. I mean, this this part of the, that investment, the metals investment, is playing which one do I want to be in if I think it's a bull market that we're, we're approaching, coming into after the 10-year-long artificial bear market. Well, nine years. Artificial bear market started in, well, it'd be 
It'll be nine years next year. In 2011, they rigged the price of silver to crash it from $50 down to $14, $15. That was an artificial bear market, 100% rigged by JP Morgan. I spent 20 years working on that, and it is finally coming true that they are arresting people at JP Morgan. Not arresting, I take it back. They are charging people with mar silver market manipulation during that time frame. And it is not the SEC. It is not the CFTC that had jurisdiction and ran three investigations. It's the FBI. So it's the real deal. And the most important thing to know about that, not only that they delayed the sentencing until December of two J.P. Morgan traders, both of them, not one, both of them, we have cooperation, both of them said it was their managers and senior managers. There's only two. The manager of the division, Blythe Masters. The manager of Blythe Masters, Jamie Dimon. Keep an eye out for that. When this system falls apart, bang, they're going to get nailed big time. So yes, it is exciting. And you, you got to think about, okay, SLV, SLV. JP Morgan is the trustee of SLV, the big silver ETF. Um, doesn't BlackRock own SLV and they hire... What's the fiduciary responsibility? They hire the world's biggest silver rigger to hold their inventory? Does that make BlackRock a co-conspirator with JP Morgan? If I was at BlackRock and I was saying, you know, I was in the uh, uh, the division that, that makes sure they're doing everything right, the compliance division, I'd go to my boss at BlackRock and say, oh my God, we're going to be on the hook for trillions of dollars because we're not following the proper procedures for hiring a custodian for our silver. We are not fulfilling our fiduciary responsibility to this ETF. The number one silver rigger is in charge of the inventory at SLV, the number one ETF for silver. What could go wrong there? BlackRock is totally and completely a co-conspirator. So keep an eye on BlackRock, whether they get taken down with Blythe Masters and Jamie Dimon and J.P. Moore. There you go. Now, having said that, so I spent 20 years fighting the criminals within the silver manipulation, within the CFTC. I've written so many letters and articles. And finally, 20 years later, we're getting to the end of the road in that conspiracy. Yes, silver's going to run crazy because it was rigged. It always has been rigged. It is still rigged today, but it's going to go absolutely berserk. Let's talk about these people. Mark Berger. You remember that song I wrote called They? I'll name names. I'll play their games. It's a line in that song. It's about calling out these criminals behind the scenes. The SEC has done something that is just beyond ridiculous. Not ridiculous. It's criminal. They're coming down on Veritasium and Reggie Middleton as being a fraud. A fraud. Who are these people? Do they know what a fraud is? In their own court documents and the rebuttal, it was shown, they were laid bare, that number one, Reggie was working with them for two years. That means Reggie said, come on in. We know you don't know what you're doing over there. Let us explain how this is a software. It's not a security. For two years, he'd been working with them. The whole time, they were trying to subvert Veritasium. It is infuriating. Number one, they told him to stop the Vedar. That was the software product. So you can have peer-to-peer -peer capital market exchanges. They told them. They, the SEC said, you better stop doing that. Stop selling their software. Stop introducing a new economic system, a new system for peer-to-peer -peer exchanges of capital assets. They said, you have to stop doing it. And then they try to bust them for not having a product. When it was the SEC that said, stop using the VADAR. That's the first thing. I mean, how Reggie even got by that is un unknown. And then the worst, they went in and sabotaged the Jamaican stock exchange deal. Reggie Middleton spends all this time and money 
going into Jamaica, showing them how this is so much better than these criminal exchanges. He gets an MOU signed, a, a memorandum of understanding signed, and then all of a sudden, silence. And it turns out that the SEC went to the Jamaican Stock Exchange behind Reggie's back, did not tell Veritasium or Reggie that they were going to do this, and basically pulled the rug out of the whole thing. Now, Reggie and his lawyers are saying, hey, SEC, I want all the information that you discussed. I want to know what was discussed there. Why did they stop talking to us after you went in and talked to them? You know what the SEC said? That's confidential information. What? The SEC is supposed to be working for me, the investor, the user, <laughs> the user of Veritasium, the people, the retail user. The SEC is working for the people. It is insane what they have done. But these are not some random people behind the shadows. Here's a list of their names from their own court document. These are people at the SEC who did this. Mark P. Berger, Laura S. Minharaban, John O. Inright, Jorge G. Tenario, Victor Salamount. Their address, 200 Vissi Street, Suite 400, New York, New York, 10281. Their phone number for Mr. Tur Torino. Jorge, he seems to be the ringleader. 212-336-9145. Email T-E-N-R-E-I-R-O-J at SEC.gov. Those are the people who did this. It's not the SEC, some gigantic entity. There's a list of one, two, three, four, five people who made this decision to take this amazing technology and destroy the company and then freeze up all his assets to further destroy the company and lock up the third thing that Reggie was doing, which was veritizing gold and silver. Now it's frozen within this ridiculous freeze. Now here's what I'm going to do. I don't feel bad about saying their names. They work for me. These people work for me. The SEC, all the names are public information. It's all right there. I did the same thing with gold and silver. I wrote letters to the regulators at the CFTC. I called them on the phone. Most of them would not talk to me. Bart Chilton did. He's the only guy who said, uh, you're right. They're rigging the silver market. But then he said something really interesting. He said, but it takes three out of five people to vote on it to get anything done. What? On the CFTC commission. You have to vote on a law? You have to vote on whether someone's breaking the law? That's criminal right there. These people are my project for the next 20 years. And your project too, if you want to help me. I'm going to be writing letters to them. I am going to be calling them. I am going to be not harassing them. I am going to ask them to explain themselves how they can take an unregulated market like cryptocurrencies, delay any kind of regulation for countless years, even though everybody was screaming about it. Reggie does his ICO long before the SEC ever produced the the DAO document that was supposed to be, oh, here's your regulation. Long after that, it was like months after Reggie had already done his ICO. This is bullshit. This cannot stand. This cannot happen. And why do I say it's 20 years? Because it took me 20 years of screaming at the CFTC and the regulators about silver, and we're finally getting to the end of the road. I don't care if it takes me another 20 years about this. And any crypto investor, it's not just about Veritasium. It's about Mark Berger, Laura Mingerban, John Enright, Jorge Terrino, and Victor Salomon deciding the winners and losers in cryptocurrencies, in crypto tokens, in software development, in new innovations. These are the deciders. And who do they take their marching orders from? Well, we used to have a guy named Robert Cohen. Who is Robert Cohen? Robert Cohen was the head of the 
cyber unit at the SEC. He just left. Oh, how convenient for Robert. And he went to a revolving door law firm in Washington. Davis Polk. Davis Polk today announced Robert Cohen will join the firm as a partner in the litigation department. Mr. Cohen will be a member of the firm's White Collar Criminal Defense Investigations Group, where he will focus on representing companies and boards in regulatory matters and internal investigations. He joins Davis Polk from the, the SEC, where he served for 15 years in the Division of Enforcement, most recently as Chief of the Cyber Unit. During his tenure at the agency, Mr. Cohen was involved in significant enforcement actions involving securities fraud, insider trading, market manipulation, and abuse of financial fraud, cryptocurrency, and cybersecurity. <laughs> Listen to this part. This should make you cringe. If you go down far enough. Davis Polk has a long history of its lawyers serving with distinction in senior roles at the SEC, including former SEC Commissioner Annette Nazareth, former Managing Executive for Policy Joseph Hall, and former SEC Enforcement Directors Larry Lynch and Linda Chapman Thompson. Basically, yeah, that's the revolving door. You put your time in at the SEC, you're going to get the big payout. And then, and then they circulate back and forth and back and forth. Criminals on Parade. I'm announcing today I am in for the long haul. 20 years of fighting the SEC and these people. I guarantee you these people will be gone. Just like when I was fighting those people at the CFTC. Michael Dunn, CFTC Commissioner Michael Dunn, the guy who stopped, literally, the one vote that stopped the enforcement, the application of position limits and silver, that would have stopped silver rigging. And where did he go? Where did Michael Dunn go? He went to the DTCC in charge of the vault at 55 Water Street three months before it flooded in Hurricane Sandy because he left that vault door open. Two months before that, he's the guy who transferred all the paperwork on gold and silver swaps into that very vault at 55 Water Street. This is huge. And this is my commitment to the crypto people. And my wife is going to hate this, but I'm going to fight this fight if it takes 20 years because this is wrong what they're doing to Veritasium, to cryptocurrencies, to Reggie Middleton. It is wrong what they did to stop this company from, one, fully developing its Vedar software project and program. They're the ones that stopped it. Don't say, oh, Reggie couldn't, couldn't follow through with this. They told him to stop. Two. The Jamaican Stock Exchange deal. They torpedoed that deal. Mark Berger, Laura Mingerman, John Enright, Jorge Torino, Victor Salamont. I guarantee you, as I fight this fight over the next couple of years, all these people will be gone. I'll be dealing with new people. And they'll say, oh, I don't know. That wasn't me. I didn't do it. This is ridiculous. You have his email. I'm going to get you all their emails. The emails at the SEC are e easy. Capital, last name, and then first initial, just like in this document. Email all of them. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna just like I did with exactly like I did with silver. Open letter to the CFTC about silver manipulation. Open letter to the SEC about fraud at the SEC. About the SEC stopping innovation, stopping companies from doing what they said they were going to do, and then suing them for not doing what they said they were going to do? This is insane. Sorry, I'm on a roll. I'm going to be talking about this at 12 o'clock today on a live chat. 12 o'clock Pacific time, I'm going live. I'm going to start with this. Well, we can talk about anything you want to talk about, but this is my 20-year project. Do I, do I think it'll take 20 years? No, I don't. I hope not, but I'm in it for 20 years if necessary. Just I didn't think silver would take 20 years. And here we are at the end of the road for the silver manipulation. If it takes 20 years to fight these bastards, because it's the right thing to do, fight it. It's the right thing to do. And I hope all you Road to Ruta members are on my side with this. 
one more thing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on a roll. I told you. Couldn't sleep last night. A whole lot of things going on. One more thing that I think is like the coolest thing ever. There is a new guy in charge at the Fed New York of the comic books, the educational comic books. His name is David Erickson, PhD, joins the Fed as head of outreach and education. I sent David a really lovely email today. I said, David, I'm so happy for your promotion. He used to work at the uh, San Francisco Fed. Your promotion to head the outreach program of the Fed New York. I am very interested in the comic book education division of the of the department you're in charge with. You're in charge of. I would like to interview you on the road to Ruta about the Fed Federal Reserve's comic book program to educate people because it educated me massively. Federal Reserve Bank of Boston documents, amazingly educated me, and I wish everybody had that information. And then all the new Fed comics right here. Go to the Fed New York, look up outreach and education. This is that guy's division. That guy, sorry, David's, my buddy David's division. So I sent him an email. I would like to interview you on YouTube. I have over almost 60,000 uh, subscribers. I want, I want to spread the word about the, the Fed comic books. And the education it can give people is amazing. Read the teacher's guide. It's an amazing blueprint of how the system was put together, how it's going, and where we need to go. And even these comic books are okay. And I said, and I'm even in one of your new comic books as a character named Glicks who runs around singing about the Federal Reserve. It was a really nice email. So David, if you're on the road to Ruta and you watch this, or anybody at the Fed, which I know you guys are, Hi, by the way, I'm on your side, guys. Absolutely. I'm on the side of the Fed. Everybody else on YouTube is saying the Fed is bad. The Fed are criminals. What did I say? I said the Fed is working to take out the bad guys based on the comic books. Read the damn comic book. So I sent an email to David just this morning. Um, I hope to hear back from him one way or the other. He might say, nah, that's too conspiratorial. And I gave him my YouTube site. I said, hey, we, I deal in all kinds of things. If you want to specifically regulate it to just discussing the comic books, I'm fine with that. But if you want to have an open and honest discussion about the Federal Reserve System and the pros and cons and the potential for really good stuff coming out of the Fed, I'm your guy. I'm the only guy on your side, on YouTube at least, right? So come to me. Let's talk it out. And uh, we'll see. I'll keep you guys informed on what's going on with that. Tomorrow, as if I don't have enough to do. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to give update four on the timeline uh, for private road members and for Patreon members. Um, please think about supporting the private road. Hit subscribe. And I'm giving away, at the moment, we're currently giving away 100 Theta tokens and 500 Theta fuel on a paper wallet and a silver road to coin. It's the well, other than the Bitcoin bin giveaway yesterday, where he gave away 10 Road Ruta coins, the only other way to get Road Ruta coins is to get them as a subscriber. So think about it, check it out, try to support my work if you can. Or also, you can join the Patreon, you don't get the coins and the other stuff, but you get access to the timeline and the updates. All right, that's it. This is Big Road to Ruta.com. Talk to you later.